guys welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video it's not just any video this is gonna be a very very good video you guys have heard me talk about the M performance digital display race wheel today's the day I finally got the wheel it is here and I'm gonna install it I looked online and I only found one write-up on this and it was in an F80 M3 so no one really has any content on installing this wheel in a car that doesn't already have it installed so I think this is gonna be a good video. It's probably gonna be a long one though, so hang in there. Can't wait to show you guys the wheel. It is absolutely gorgeous. Huge shout out to Keys Motorsports. They are the people who sent this out to me. If you guys are interested in buying one, I'm gonna link it down below. Go ahead and hit that link. It will take you right to the product. Go ahead and order one for your car. Let's jump right into it. Holy crap. <laughs> this thing is sick. So. It is all Alcantara with the M stitching all the way across. It has our buttons right here and over here. Here is the actual display up here. That's where the LEDs go up. And you know your boy went with the dry carbon that matches the interior of my M2. So the part number and the link that I'm gonna leave in the description is for this entire kit. It comes with everything. Everything you see here, well not the tools, but all this stuff comes with all this. Comes with a little manual. However, this is not an installation manual. This only shows you the features and what is included in the package. The link comes with this dry carbon that matches the interior around the M2. However, there are some options to change it out for like gloss carbon or just the standard black finish. Comes with zip ties, little bracket piece right here. This guy right here, yet to figure out what that is. We will figure it out when we install it. And then here is all the cabling to go ahead and run this steering wheel and make sure that we have everything functioning properly. So this is gonna be a rather long install and a, a little bit more in depth, but it is going to be a good one. I promise you that. As far as tools, we have the impact. I'm not sure if I'm gonna need the impact. I just got it out just in case. We're using a coat hanger to fish a wire through to the FRM. You need to run these cables from the steering column over to the passenger side FRM, which is located by the passenger footwell. And then I got this nifty little light right here on Amazon. This is a super bright LED, so I can film everything on the inside of the car. Breaker bar to get off the steering wheel, either the impact or the breaker bar is gonna do it. Steering wheel bolt is a 16 millimeter. We're gonna be using a seven millimeter. We're gonna be using a 10 millimeter. I did get some wire taps, but it does appear that BMW supplies a few wiretaps of their own in here. And we have pick tools and of course a wire cutter. So that should be everything that you need, everything that you need to do this kit. If I did leave something out, I will mention it later in the video, but let's go ahead and jump into the install, guys. This is going to be sick. I did just wanna state really quick, you guys, I did entertain the notion of buying an aftermarket steering wheel just like I did for the E90 M3. There's a few reasons I did not do that. One, the aftermarket steering wheels do not have the same functions as the OEM BMW M Performance Race Display Digital Steering Wheel. They don't have the same functions. That is the first reason why I went with the OEM wheel. Second reason, I didn't wanna cheap out. For the steering wheel, I feel like it's so important to have a quality, quality piece that also falls under factory warranty. So if anything happens to this, I'm okay. I'm covered by BMW. I just felt like personally, this was something that I didn't wanna cheap out on. I, I wanna make sure that I build this the correct way and then I buy the proper pieces. So I went ahead and I bit the bullet and I got the real one. Generally, if it didn't have the digital race display and all that, I probably would have gone aftermarket, but I really wanted the race display and I felt like that was such an important part of getting this steering wheel because it has like oil temp, lap times, the shifting lights. There's a lot of features on the steering wheel that I think will be very, very useful and helpful down the line. Also, I did reach out to a few aftermarket companies that did offer the digital display. However, their digital display, the way that it was wired up was wonky in my opinion. A lot of people said that they, it plugged into the OBD2 port 
I definitely do not want something plugged into my OBD2 port all the time while I'm driving for a, a steering wheel. That just seems silly to me. I'd rather wiretap it into the FRM the proper way and make sure that I have all of the functionality that the M Performance wheel has. So that is why I went the OEM route. And in my opinion, that is the way to go with something as big of a purchase as this. Something with a digital display on a steering wheel with shifting lights. I just feel like that's not a place that you want to cheap out. Side note, it's gotta be like 95 degrees in here. It's super, super hot today, so bear with me. I mean, you're probably sitting at home on the couch in air conditioning, so it's probably not that big of a deal to you, but it is very hot. So I'm gonna sweat my balls off today for you guys and myself and install this wheel. Let's go ahead and jump into the car. If you guys are new here, this is my beautiful BMW F87 M2. We're gonna go ahead and disconnect the battery behind this ginormo. GTS wing. So if you look under here in the rear deck lid, you have the battery, go ahead and disconnect it. The negative terminal, put a towel under it. Also, I wrapped a towel around the trunk latch because I am an idiot and I probably will shut this at some point. And you know, you don't want to lock yourself out of the trunk. So we just, we do that to avoid any headaches down the road. Now we are effectively going to jump also. I mean, check out my beautiful tool chest. I also ordered a wonderful table. Finally, I have a workshop table coming on Monday. It's six feet long. It's adjustable. It's really nice. I'm making big apartment gains here, you guys. So we got the wheel right here. We're gonna go ahead and jump in the car and take off the old steering wheel. One thing I didn't mention, a tool you guys will need to take off the steering wheel probably a screwdriver like this. You don't want anything too sharp when you are trying to release the springs on the factory steering wheel because you can gouge out wires and just destroy the inside of the steering wheel. You don't want to do that. You want something that's rather dull to hit that spring and release that airbag. So we do have to take the airbag out. That's why we disconnected the battery. So let's go ahead and hop in the car and start that process. All right guys, so we are in the car and you are gonna see on the steering wheel down here, you have two holes. One right here and then one on the other side. And the way that you are releasing this airbag is you're pressing in and releasing the clips inside and then pulling out the airbag. So you want to do each one and there's a releasing mechanism that's basically held in by a spring. So you got to push on those springs, unlock it, pull each side, and then you have some clips inside to release some plugs. Bam, got it. All right. So then we can just remove it. All right, so here is the airbag out and you have those three clips coming into the airbag. You don't need to touch those. We're just gonna go ahead and remove this one clip right here. And the way that you do that is just press down on top with a nice long flathead screwdriver and then the whole thing will release out. So I need two hands to do it, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right, so that is out. Where all we're doing is pressing down on that top clip. Then you just release it, take the airbag, set it somewhere where it's not gonna get damaged. So we do not need to replace an airbag. They're expensive. All right, so here is the inside of the steering wheel. And if you look right there, I have my screwdriver in here. I'm showing you guys the clip that you are releasing to get that airbag out. Now that clip right there, when you push in there, that's what releases the airbag. So you're doing that on both sides. And then just be patient with that. Don't start stabbing around. You only need to press it in Shouldn't be like moving it around and all that stuff. Don't do that. Just press it in. If it's not hitting and it's not coming out, take it back out, find the right angle. So before we actually remove the steering wheel with the 16 millimeter bolt in the center, we're gonna go ahead and remove the finisher piece, which is the trim. I believe BMW calls it the finisher. Um, you're gonna go ahead and remove this T20 over here in the corner. You're gonna go ahead and remove this T20 right there. And then we're gonna go ahead and remove the T20 that is directly underneath the trim piece. And then this is held in by retaining clips. You can go ahead and pull this whole thing out. All right, so I just wanted to update you guys on this part. Um, these little clips, there's basically these little pop clips in here. There's one right there. And I'm just using a little pick tool. There's one right here. And then what I did was I just started pulling and the whole thing came out. And you can see back here, it's like a little bit of adhesive and stuff. You just pull it back and remove that tape just like that. So this frees that finishing set, finishing piece from the trim. And then you have everything exposed. At this point, we're gonna be able to remove the entire steering wheel um, with the bolt and then we can take everything out and we have all the guts in here everything that we can transfer over So I guess now would be a good time to go ahead and just unplug this plug and this plug these two connectors right there 
Um, those two are gonna have to come out in order to remove the steering wheel from the column. So we'll go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna use a little pick tool or a flathead and get in there and just pop them out. All right, so I just used a little pick tool, pop that one out, just pressed up a little bit on that, pulled it out. Got this one out from there. And now as far as I can see, all of the electronics are disconnected from the actual column. So I think we can go ahead and release this 16 millimeter and just pull off the entire steering wheel. And then I can go ahead and take off all the guts on here outside of the car, which is gonna be far easier than trying to do it on the car. Cause there are some bolts behind here that we need to get to to release all the functions and, and all the buttons. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Um, this is a 16 millimeter. First, we're gonna try it with an impact. If that doesn't do it, then I do have a breaker bar. Um, these are on there pretty good. All right, votes down below. Will the impact gun take it off? It's just a little electric impact gun. Who thinks it'll come off? <laughs> oh, we got it with the impact. Awesome, don't even need the breaker bar. This thing's fantastic. All right, so we got it off. Go ahead and just screw the dang thing out. So go ahead, remove that 16 mil. Um, so now everything should be free. Everything should be free. So we're gonna go ahead and pull it off. Now, when you guys do this, pull off the entire steering wheel towards you. Make sure you don't turn anything in the column. Do not touch any of that. You don't want anything spinning that can really screw some things up down the road. So just be very, very cautious. Take this off, get out of the car and work on it outside of there to take off all this stuff. Let's go ahead and pull the guts out. I figured this is probably a good time to do a little side-by-side -side comparison. So the uh, Alcantara wheel is just a little bit thicker, probably just because it's wrapped in Alcantara. Um, up here, it is noticeably thicker. Obviously, they need to fit all this race display stuff in there. The control sides are thicker. There are two buttons on here to sift through all of the functions. Yeah, so here is the standard one. And I have so many people that were getting mad at me because uh, this is dirty. Yeah, I know it's dirty. Obviously, I didn't clean it because I knew I was getting a new one. Um, also, I just want to say right now, I'm not selling this. So don't even bother asking for it. Uh, not for sale. I keep all of my stock parts. I don't like to sell things. So now we have everything here. We're going to go ahead and pull all of the guts, all the controls and everything off of this steering wheel and transfer them over to this wheel. Looks like we have a T20 there, T20 over there. And so once we do that, these plugs should come out with that and I should be able to transfer all this stuff over. I'm gonna go ahead and assemble this whole thing before I start wiring and doing all the other stuff in the car. Looks like there is a little grounding wire in here. It is also a T20, pop that out. This piece right here just slides right out. These rubber pieces are for the vibration in the steering wheel. And this over here is ran for the heat. However, we are not running heat on my new steering wheel. So we don't need to worry about that. I'm not too concerned about that. This is Charlotte, North Carolina. It's always hot here for the most part. I don't use my heated steering wheel ever. So we're really just removing the multimedia functions right now. And you just need to take out this plug over here. Just use a little pick tool. And this one is connected to the other one. It comes out in one entire piece. So the whole thing is one piece. So we have this, we're gonna transfer this over to the new wheel, like so. Um, we're gonna take off this backing plate. All right, so I just pulled everything off the steering wheel. For the vibration mechanism, it looks like it's just a clip right here that you pry off of the actual steering wheel. And this whole thing will go into our new steering wheel and it looks like they also give you a new clip with the new steering wheel if you need to use it so we'll go ahead and swap all that now so here is the vibration mechanism and i just used a pick tool on each side to pull it off and this wheel is officially bare you can see the heat right here however obviously i'm not running that in my wheel so we don't need to worry about it my factory clip seemed to work just fine so i'm just going to use that and discard the one they gave me with the wheel spent the longest time staring at this thing trying to figure out what these little black and white cables were for they're for paddles <laughs> i don't have paddles so we can just discard these these can hang out this whole thing is whoo boy it is a, uh, it's a process, but basically you're just finding everything that you pulled out and plugged it into the, uh, and plug it into the new harness. It's really not too difficult. Just kind of trace your steps, but I am also attaching a step-by-step -step manual that shows you exactly what to do from BMW. Um, if you guys want to follow those steps. So I'm going to kind of blow through the rest of this here, but this all gets tucked. This actually ends up going under here and this will just tuck away 
And actually right now, this is all assembled. Also, look at how sexy it looks. This is all assembled now. So I still have my vibration. Obviously, we're gonna forego the heating. We're gonna start working on the wiring in the car. So we're gonna have to run this loom down to the FRM and um, do some tapping. Do some tapping into some wire and then we'll use this guy over here to run the wire from the driver's side over to the passenger side so let's hop in the car and start working on that this is all sweat um it's super hot dude your boy is sweating i was trying to not drip on the wheel all right so back in the car and what we have to do now is separate the steering column assembly. So we have to separate this from this. Uh, it's basically a bunch of clips that run around here. There's no screws or anything, just a bunch of clips. My weapon of choice is gonna be this little pick tool and I'm slowly just gonna work my way around here. Uh, obviously just be very careful. You don't wanna break any clips or anything at this point. That would suck. Um, once we're done with that, the top should come up. We're just gonna leave that there until reassembly and then the bottom will come off and there should be a couple of plugs probably for this guy right here. And we'll go ahead and remove those. It might just be one plug, but just go ahead and remove the plug or plugs, and then this part will come off completely. All right, so I'll show you what you have to do. Um, there's basically these clips right here that hold into that bottom piece on the inside. What I did was I took a trim tool and I stuck it inside, and then I was able to kind of finesse it and open it up, pull the top off, and leave that there. And then you have these big old clips right here. You're basically taking each clip on each side, pulling them outwards, and then dropping the whole thing below. And then we have two plugs on the inside, right there and right there. We're gonna unplug those. This whole piece can come out. All right, so now we have to remove the electronics hub. Like I said before, you guys, do not spin this. Keep it just like that. It is four seven millimeter bolts all the way around. I'm gonna pull this out and then we're gonna be connecting one of the plugs of the wiring harness, the adapter, the retrofit kit to the back of this connection hub. So we're gonna pull this off unplug everything and set it to the side. All right, so here's the back of the electronic hub. And basically you need to pull off this. The way that this works is it has a sliding mechanism. And the reason you gotta take off this whole piece is because the steering column is in the way of that sliding mechanism that locks this plug, of course, right? So you gotta undo all that just to get to that plug. So we're gonna go ahead and push this down, slide that up, pull that out, pull that out. And then we're gonna set this electronics hub aside and then we are working on the wiring portion of this. We are effectively done on this side for right now. We're gonna hop over to the passenger side and we're gonna be working in the footwell area. I'll meet you guys over there. All right, we're over at the passenger side and we have two 10 millimeters that we need to undo. We're gonna drop this panel under here and then we're also gonna remove this right here. So we're gonna take out this little guy, pull up, and then some of this weather stripping, we'll have to peel it back in order to get this off. So these are mostly clips. And then you just have the two 10 millimeters. So there's one of them, and that's the other one right over there. All right, first piece of trim dropped. You will have a footwell light right there. Go ahead and unplug that. Then we can take that out of the car, move it to the side. Dude, this light, this little LED light is a game changer. Little tiny LED light, you can just stick it anywhere. It'd be great for like the engine bay too. I love it. So we're gonna unplug that, pull it out of the car, and then remove these side plastic pieces. All right, so to explain to you guys what's gonna happen next, I'm taking the wire hanger, I'm straightening it all the way out, and I'm gonna run it from the driver's side underneath all the way through the back over here until I see it. And then we're gonna be connecting a wire from the wire loom. There's only one wire really that runs up to the steering column. The rest is being done over here in the FRM. So we're gonna tape up the wire once we fish this all the way through to the coat hanger. And then we're gonna pull the coat hanger all the way back and it's gonna run our wire for us up to the steering column. And then we have it fished up there and we're good. So I'm gonna go ahead and find my way across. Just be careful when you're running this coat hanger through here. Obviously, if you feel something in the way, just back it up, come back, back it up, find a little fish canal, you know? Fish that bad boy through. Find a nice little canal for yourself until you get all the way in and then tape up the wire and pull it all the way out. Well, boys. Got ourselves a live one here. It's a bit of a fishing excursion, but you just gotta stick with it. I don't know what accent that was. I was trying to do Australian, but then I turned like English. <laughs> Anyways, here is our coat hanger and I ran it through. Um, that took a little bit, man. What I was doing is I took the light and I shined it in there and I just tried to find like the best hole possible and then slowly worked my way over and I did get it to come out the other side. So I'll show you where it came out. I'm having a hard time actually showing you where it came out, but it's it's right here. It's like literally right there. Um, it's right up in there. So I'm gonna take a needle nose and I'm gonna pull it down, bend it a little bit, 
and then we're gonna tape up the wire, this blue and white lead wire. It's got a really, really long end to it. This is the one that we're running all the way over there. So we're gonna tape this to the coat hanger and then pull the coat hanger back through. There she is. So I'm gonna tape her up and send that wire back through. All right, she's all taped up. We're gonna send her over to the driver's side. Oh, I think we got a big one. I think we got a big one, guys. I think she's a keeper. I think she's a keep. Oh, she's a keeper. You can go ahead and untape this and we're gonna be tapping this into the existing harness for the steering wheel. All right, so we got that blue and white cable coming out here. And basically this guy right here with the locking mechanism, you're gonna go ahead and open that guy up. It's a release clip on the side there. Just go ahead and open that up. Like I'll do it with one hand. And drop her off at the pool. See there's a number right there. It says one. A number up here that says six. We're going into number four. So one, two, three, four. Looks like it's right to the right of this little lime and white cable. So right there, number four. So that's what we're plugging that into. I need a I need a free hand to do it, but I'm gonna plug that into there and then put that little cap back on and we're good here. Then we're going back over on that side and we're gonna work on the footwell module stuff. All right, so now we have to remove the, in order to get to the front electronic module, we have to remove this gray cover and it's basically just a T20 right here. So pop out that T20. There's two clips on the side, just pull it out. And then we can access the FEM. Yay, got it. All right, so the first one we need to undo is this one right here. It's, it's called CON2. Um, you're gonna be removing this from the FRM. It's the first one in there. And then we have to take the housing off and we're gonna disconnect two wires. Uh, I believe they are 18 and 19. And then we're gonna connect new wires to that port, those two ports. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the housing off here and I'll update you. Here are the guts of that CON2. We're not using this black one, we're using this gray one. Um, you'll see a 14 on the far side and a 21 on the far side of this side over here. <laughs> that blue and red wire. That's 18 and 19. So we're gonna press in the metal pin in there that you can just barely see. Press in and then push it out with the uh, pick tool. And then we have two new wires going in there. All right, so we took our new harness and we used 18 for the red, 19 for the blue red. So we had con two over here. Now I pulled out con three, which is the next one over on the the front electronic module. And we are locating 19, which is right over here. So find 19 on this harness. Basically, we're going to be taking 419. I believe it is that red and blue wire in there. There's a little red and blue wire right there. You can barely see it. We're going to be tapping this green wire into that red and blue wire. Got these little wire taps here that come with the kit. And we're gonna run one side in there and another side in there. We should be good. I'm gonna, uh, pull out some of the wire loom over here so I can get a little more exposure of that blue and red wire in there. I'll show you guys what it looks like when I'm done. There you go. Gotta make sure these taps are all the way down. Use a pliers, get them nice and flush. So green into the red and blue. So that is tapped, we're good there. Everything wired up, boys and gals. Um, I took the brown wire, which is just a ground wire and ran it to the ground. I wiretapped it to the ground of the footwell light. So that's how yours should look. There's also this little plug. So this is our new harness that's coming from the driver's side. And these are the ones that we tapped into that CON2. And then those two that you removed from CON2, they're gonna go into the existing harness right here. It's kind of confusing, but it's really not. It's all color coded. You'll see that you have this guy. This is called your control unit. And this is coming out of that same wire loom and you're just plugging it into here. Now this is all just gonna get tucked back behind the front electronic module. This plug right here is optional. It is a 2D lap trigger measuring sensor and it's actually for the BMW service team if you're out on a track and you're racing. Um, however, we do not need this, so we are going to omit it. We're gonna basically tidy all of this up, put this all back together, push it down there and then go ahead and start using some zip ties and get all this stuff nice and neat in there. And then I'm gonna put it back together like nothing ever happened. All right, let's put that wheel back together. All right, so we already tapped this with our new wire. So that's ran and we're good to go. I used a zip tie to kind of get it hidden back there and secured. We're just gonna plug those three connectors back into 
the electronic steering assembly and then we can put this back on the car, put the plastic trim back together, clip it back together, and then we'll put in the steering wheel. That is back on. Time for Bertha to go back on. Well, not back on, but dude, this wheel's so sick. All right, I'm gonna put it on, I'll get right back to you. Holy crap, dude. This is my first time seeing it in the whip, bro. I'm so sweaty. I don't even want to touch this thing right now. But, um, yeah, boys, we did it. Your boy did it. Your boy freaking did it, bro. Let's put that carbon trim on, homie. Oh, yes. Yo, this thing looks so baller. <laughs> this thing. Looks so baller. Wow. Took a good four hours to get it done. But we did it and we did it right. Um, so now I'm going to put everything back together, fasten up the battery, and hopefully we have lights. All right, dude, connect to the battery. This is my first time starting it. I'm experiencing this with you. God, please work. I need the key, bro. The suspense was just leading up to that moment. You didn't even have your key, bro. Yo! 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 <laughs> Yo, my trunk's open, that's why I got that open. Dude! Y'all, did you guys see it? You guys saw it light up, right? I'm in this mode right now where you can like actually set where the lights go off so right now it's 4,000 and it's reading my it's actually reading my rpms so you can see it there so right now when the car hits 4,000, the lights go off so we want this to be at like red line i think right that will go up to like six and a half i know that's not red line but i don't want these lights going off all the time i saw other people who like set this lower like why would you do that why do you just want the lights going off all the time? Like, I only want the lights going off when I'm in full race mode, bruh. When that thing is about ready to shift. Like, that's what it's there for. Um, so I got it up to 6,500. Um, hold this one to go back. So you hold this one to, like, go back. And then you hold that one to, like, select whatever you're selecting. So if you go through here, like, a bunch of different modes, dude. That's the G-Force mode. Stop clock. Um, brightness. Oh, yeah, miles per hour, which I already did. And then you like hold this one to go back. Um, oil temp, dude. Uh, we want Fahrenheit. 257 lets you know when your car is ready to be beaten on. It's one of the main reasons I bought this wheel. It's just good to know when you can actually get rambunctious with your whip. Uh, fuel, I guess it's got fuel in here. All right, so, all right, cool. We got it in, everything works. I kind of like got off topic there and started showing you guys the features. Um, like I said before, this is not, it's not that easy. So if you don't have experience working on cars or you are unfamiliar or uh, you're just uneducated or not confident in doing this, please just have a shop do it because um, there's a lot of stuff that you can screw up, a lot of big expensive things that you can screw up if you don't do this right. And uh, it was my first time doing it. So I was learning as I went and filming it for you guys. And I also started a blog. So I'm taking good pictures for the blog. Um, the blog is basically everything that I install on my cars, every part, everything that I code. I'm doing written format of all that on my website for people. So this, um, this was like a seven out of 10. Dude, it looks unbelievable. So glad that I went with OEM. Like this is, Totally worth the money. I did not want aftermarket for this one, you guys. Um, horn still works. That's a, so you always want to test and make sure that things work. Horn works, we're good. Uh, like I said, you guys, I'm gonna run inside. I gotta get some food, man. And I'll catch up with you guys in a few minutes. <laughs> Fast forward. It's actually the next day, you guys. So we installed the steering wheel and it's, uh, dude, it's, it's so sick. As you can see, this video is already like 30 minutes long. It, this video could probably be over an hour if I went through all of the functions and features of the new steering wheel. There is so much that you can do with this steering wheel. I spent about two hours last night 
going through this manual and kind of learning about all the functions on the steering wheel and how to actually operate it the correct way. So what I'm gonna do is the next video that's coming out on Wednesday will be an M Performance Digital Race Display steering wheel function video. We're gonna go through all of the functions and just talk about why I really like this wheel, why I bought it. A couple of things that I do wanna know for you guys is down in the description, I'm gonna have obviously the steering wheel that I bought. I'm also gonna have all of the tools that I use listed. And like I said before, there will be a blog posted. The blog might not be live right away for this specific install, but I will have it up this week. I go through all of the different steps for different things and installs and Beamer code stuff step by step in the blog. And it's so much easier to have something that's written that you can just follow and see exactly what you need to buy rather than like rewinding in a video. That just makes it tough for some people. And I know that some people digest written content a little bit better than video content. So that is why I'm doing the blog in addition to the video stuff. Anyways, you guys, this steering wheel is, it's, dude, it's so dope. Like, probably the sickest thing that I've put on the car so far. It completely changed the interior. It feels, it feels so good. I spent like a half an hour last night driving around. It just feels amazing, and it looks so sick in the car. So the way that it looks and paired with like all the functions that this thing has, my mind's blown, dude. It's just so badass. But I just wanna thank Keys Motorsports for sending out the steering wheel. If you guys are interested, it's gonna be linked down in the description. But you guys, thank you so much for watching the video. In Wednesday's video, we're gonna talk about all the functionality and show you a little bit more in depth what this wheel can actually do. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.